The Broughton Archipelago, the heart of wild salmon country, is also home to the highest concentration of fish farms on the coast. These industrial farms have long been suspected to be the cause of repeated epidemics of lice and disease in the wild fish stocks of the area. DFO, the government agency in charge of protecting wild fish stocks in Canada, maintains that the lice are not killing the young wild salmon of the Broughton Archipelago. Here, at the Salmon Coast Research Station, many of the projects are attempting to answer questions surrounding how the lice are affecting the wild fish stocks. One crew of researchers is looking at the factors involved in how the free-floating juvenile stages of lice attach themselves to the young wild salmon. The lice hatch from two long egg strings, which are attached to the adult female louse, which the researchers refer to as a gravid moat. Once hatched, the lice are released into the ocean currents in a free-floating form until they find a host to attach to and begin feeding. What we're trying to find out is if a fish is previously infected, if they are more susceptible to infection again. So in this tank what we have is we have um, one side which we designated for dirty fish in which we have motile lice on them, which are quite large and they attach to fish, but they can move around. On the other side, we have clean fish, which are fish that don't have scars. They're healthy, vibrant fish. And so what we're doing is we're putting in the plantonic stage of a lice. And we're actually gonna see if they prefer to attach to the fish that are already infected with the motile lice or to the clean fish. They look like they have little slivers coming off of them, those are all of the juvenile lice. These juvenile lice work on chemical cues, so they're attracted to the scent of a salmon. So when we put in fish that are infected, we see that they're secreting a lot of uh, blood, mucus, stuff that the juvenile lice like to pick up on. And so we're seeing so far that they actually like, they prefer to attach to fish that have these wounds on them because they smell better to them. And this is actually important because in the Broughton, we have multiple farms that are lined up one after the other. So we're seeing that maybe in fact, these fish that already are infected are more susceptible of becoming infected again. Yeah. So you can see like the, the female lice produce these scars, they're called moat scars, and they're pin pricks. That's where they sort of insert and suck the, the blood and mucus from the fish and feed off of it. And on some of these guys, the moat scars are hemorrhaging, so the damage is pretty severe. On this morning, Ashley and Christy are surprised at the harm one female louse in particular has caused. It's had a gravid moat on it for we caught it yesterday with a moat on it and then it's been in our tank overnight and the moats just caused so much damage on its side. You can almost see down to the bone I think right there, yeah. So I mean like what we've seen just in little tanks, it's unbelievable when you think that's happening out there. This one we got from the wild. Okay. Um, yesterday it had some scarring on it and it had a gravid on it, and as well as another female, I think. And then... It had like a black scar? Calum yeah, scar. it had a bit of, it was a bit open, but it wasn't anything like that. And then when we checked it this morning, it was sort of belly up on the surface, still alive, hmm. but had but that really massive damaged. wound. Hmm. Have you seen a louse right on the wound? Uh, yeah, there was one on uh, this morning. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if you could eat directly into the flesh, why not do it? Mm. Yeah, I know, it can't be a fish eating it. And they had another one like this, looked pretty well the same. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Eating them alive. Yeah. Yeah. You imagine those fish disappear a lot quicker out in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Long before that. It really reminds you how voracious these females are. Yeah. You know, they need the, the, those nutrients to produce these egg strings and it, it really shows when they chow down on them like this. The suffering of the fish in their experiment had obviously affected Ashley and Christy. 
It seems to me that one of the things that happens to the researchers here is that they develop a deep appreciation and respect for the area and its inhabitants. Today, we are going on a dive to gather specimens for tonight's open house with the community of Echo Bay. On our way to the dive site, we are accompanied by dolphins. Just another day in the Broughton Archipelago. During the dive, I realize once again how much life there is down here that we don't see. And when I see how many of these creatures are feeding on the nutrients carried to them by the ocean currents, I am again reminded of how essential it is that we find a way to keep these waters clean. Down here, it is like the Garden of Eden. When researchers come to the station, we just try and make sure that there's kind of an understanding that we're going to be involved in community activities. So tonight we're just looking at all the different sea creatures that people have pulled up on dives and kind of incorporated into a fun education program for the kids to do after the soccer game. And then tonight we'll have dinner. Is that an eel? It's a gunnel. Oh, hopefully it uh, kind of helps show the kids that science can be fun, that all of these people who are investing all their time into doing this aren't just a big bunch of boring nerds, but are actually kind of fun and active people. Fun nerds! <laughs> we got to have more, yeah, healthy geeks. Just look at the world around you, right here on the ocean floor. Such wonderful things around you, what more is you looking for? Oh, my God. 